Welcome back, everyone, to the Net Zero K Triple Threat Tournament. I remain your host, Dominic, and we have yet another match. It is going to be or another round, actually. And it is going to be a round between Team DoD and Team Astron, which includes RTO, Sortail, or current replacement TO, rather. And to answer a question people had previously, the music is not Skullgirls music. That is copyrighted. I can't like, just play it. That would be a massive risk to my channel. Also, it, it's Skullgirls music. A little bit for Skullgirls. Like, I like the music, and I certainly was inspired by that in order to pick this music, but this is all OZ Remix music, and so I can use it provided I give them credit. According to their website. That's as far as I can tell the, the way the licensing works for OZ Remix. As long as I put a link to all the songs that I use, which I do, then we'll be fine. Anyway, let's go! So we have Team DoD versus Team Astron. Team DoD is... Oops, this is Team DoD. Team DoD is Plymouth Fury, Modded Deathclaw, and Wolkalar. Wolkalar going for Cloakie, Modded Deathclaw going for Hovers, and Planes are Plymouth Fury's choice. We're on Thornford, by the way, a map which I wouldn't really have thought of as a 3 3 map, but sure, let's see what happens. It'll probably be quick. Monero is part of Team Astron, though. Team, that is Astro, Monero, and Sortail. Astron going for Cloakies. Monero going for Amphbots. And Sortail going for Air as well. Because in a map this size, when your base is just going to be this giant corner, you might as well go for Air right off the bat. I mean, there's really no reason not to. Of course, that being said, Thor Thornford is the kind of map where if you have some kind of way of getting around the water, which... I mean, you have Hovers for Team DoD, and you have Amphbots for Team Astron. So there are ways around this. Basically, you can just go around the sides and go through here and come up the side. So yeah, that's probably something we'll see from time to time, though I don't know how much we're going to see it because this is a 3v3, not a 1v1. You see that fairly often in a 1v1, but in a 3v3, it's very easy to make defenses along the passes. So you're not likely to see as much of this kind of cheese strategy. It's probably just going to be a forward type thing, which we are indeed seeing. A bit of a small skirmish coming in here, some daggers coming in from Mod of Deathclaw. Not really finding a whole lot of value here, but they should be able to at least get some scouting going. That's that's still valuable, get the information. Same time, though, the Air Force coming in, that's getting even more information. At this point, I think... Let's see. Yeah, all the factors are known. Same time, that cannot be said for Team Astro. They actually don't know everything being built down here. They know the, the hover and the planes. They don't know the cloakie. They'll probably figure it out soon enough. I mean, it's not a huge deal to not know Cloakie. Really, knowing whether or not your opponent has gone early air is the only thing that's that relevant to know at the start of the game. Everything else, you can kind of approach when you see it. It's more important to know what units are being built than the type of unit specifically. I mean, obviously there are some cheese things you could do with early, like early jump bots, for instance, that would be, that are good to know about, or early spider bots. But you're not going to see jump or spider very often on a map like Thornford, especially in a 3v3. But mostly on a map like Thornford. Normally you see hovers here. Like in 1v1, it's very common to see hovers. Amphbots are not uncommon. Cloaky I've seen a few times, but yeah, hover just has the advantage going around the sides. So yeah, I expect the players aren't really too worried about that on Team Astron. And besides, they can easily see what's going on. Like, they have their air force as well. They can rush in, do whatever they want. However, at this point, everything's splitting out fairly evenly. Team Astron expanding a little bit faster over to the south side of the map than than Team DoD is, and Team DoD has also lost the north side, so Team Astron expanding that little bit faster. Now, Wukalar's commander is in a good position to actually take this south side, but I'm curious what they're going to do with that. Not to mention, there's not a... Okay, there's some reclaim being done. Good. Okay, I was about to say, not to mention not enough reclaim, but actually there is enough reclaim. In fact, Team Astron is the one that is a little bit behind on the reclaim. They could very easily start taking those forts, and they're not. So yeah, that's the thing they could very easily... Seriously? I... Oh my God. Sorry, I'm, I'll get to that in a sec. What I was... Anyway, yeah, so Wukla unfortunately losing their commander, not able to take the southeast, and the southeast is going to go over instead to Team Astron. Very convincingly. So yeah, Team Astron, they are getting an economic advantage pretty quickly. They haven't taken the reclaim yet, but part of me wonders if that's just because they're saving it for the late game. You know, when they're more even on metal, because they know they're just going to take all the metal extractors, and then from there just go, okay, well, we've taken all the metal extractors. What's left? Reclaim. Cool. What's reclaim? All of these forts. Because these forts, like, each of these forts is about 600 metal reclaim. And that has been taken by Team DoD, or at least one of them has been taken. And, of course, the center forts are another thing, which is also 600. 
And it looks like Team Duty is definitely going for those pretty quickly. And I like that. I like the fact that the center force are being taken. That's something that's important. Like, you want to make sure that you are taking advantage of the reclaim. Because this map has a fair amount of reclaim on every side of the map. Like, it's, it's quite reclaim heavy. You don't want to just throw it away. What the heck? I want you to do a reclaim thing. Show reclaim. Thank you. Yeah, you got like 1,500 metal of reclaim on a corner of the map. Ah, but unfortunately, the workers are going down, so so much of that reclaim. Glaze coming in here from Team Astro and wiping out all of Team DoD's terrains. I mean, the Swifts are trying to help, but it's just not enough. The Scalpel should be able to deal some damage, but those Glaze get micro quite well to be able to get rid of this, or at least to a dodge the Scalpel. Might not get rid of it. Nah, not even going for getting rid of it. More folks can get rid of the Quill, and to that I agree. Get rid of the workers first. I always say that. Get rid of the workers and you remove a lot of your opponent's ability to do stuff, especially on this map where the reclaim is so important. Getting rid of those workers is getting rid of 5 metal per second off your opponent easy. And actually with Quills, I think... I have to double check. I think it's 7.5. No, it's 5. It's 5. No, 7.5 is not Quill. No, it's Weaver and I think Welder. Unless Welder is 4. How am I forgetting this stuff? I know Weaver for sure. I think it was only the air builders that are 4. But anyway, yeah, so a lot of reclaim has been removed. Interestingly, defense is being put in place to try to cut off this southeast expansion, but it's not going to work. I mean, Valiant Effort, I really like it, but these Conjurers aren't going to be able to defend themselves well enough, especially not with all the Ravens coming in here. Those Conjurers are dead? Yeah, they're dead. They're dead. The boys made sure of that. Got the D-Cloak off the hits. Same time, it looks like there is... A bit of raiding going on, on the north side of the map, but it's not really enough. The main thing right now is that Team DoD needs to start rebuilding, and they are. They're definitely on that. It's just making that actually happen is a bit of a pain. Like, that's going to be very difficult to do. Especially... Oh. How did I miss them losing this? Crap, I'm sorry. I was so distracted by the fact that this expansion was being cut off that I missed what probably was a bombing run over the side. Except I don't see any... Well, that... Very successful bombing run, apparently. I mean, at this point, really, Sortail is doing a lot here. Like, Sortail is doing a lot to just make sure that everything works out so you can kind of go around the side and... I mean, they have all the air. They have the entire sky controlled. That's what I mean. It's just, that's all there is. They have the sky. They can throw in any anti-air. They will, are, their opponents can throw any anti-air they want. At least airborne anti-air. The Swiss will take care of it. Stuff on the ground. I mean, the hacksaws aren't going to be easy to take care of. Everything else is fine. Unfortunately, the Raptors and Swiss are not in position. One of the Ravens does go down. Another one heavily threatened. It looks like it might go down as well. I mean, just now getting rid of some of the Swiss. But even then, that second Raven is not going to go down. Just barely gets saved. And back to the air pad. But that was close. That was way too close. I'm not really sure how that happened. Because I think they have radar, right? Yeah, they got radar coverage. They, they'd know that their air force is covering, but apparently Sortel was not looking at that at the time, so that kind of makes sense. I mean, that, that happens. You know, you can sometimes forget things or be distracted by things, so fair enough. But yeah, that's... That was a bit of a shame. Still, though, it looks like it is going to be a another raid for Glaives. I mean, this is... Thing, the Phoenix is coming in, though. That should be able to take care of most of the Glaives. Mace is helping out, but the Phoenix not dropping its bombs! The Glaives! What are the Glaives allowed to do? Phoenix hasn't dropped anything. Fortunately for the Phoenix, these solar colliders are distracting them. Are distracting the Glaives, rather. So the Glaives are much easier targets. Still three of them left. Still a lot of openings, actually. So it's not over yet, but it is coming close. At the same time, there's massive force coming in here from Team Astron, trying to wipe out the southern base. The Glaives are surprisingly not going down yet. I don't see any sign that they're actually going to be taken out anytime soon. If they take out this Hacksaw, that's going to be it. And it looks like they are going to take... Oh, no! The Hacksaw just barely survives. That does leave air protection in the main base. I mean, I don't know how much this thing can actually apply, because the Team DoD, they've got half metal per second. Like, they have 20, 23 to 28 metal per second compared to 60, so it's still not a great position. Especially when you consider that this entire force is just destroying everything. So I don't really see an easy out for this for Team DoD that doesn't involve them just throwing in the towel and taking an L. But if they have anything up their sleeves, now's the time. 
Unfortunately, they don't have the reclaim. That would be very nice to have up their sleeves, because they do still have some of the reclaim available, but they don't have any units there. Nothing to take it. If this force was destroyed as well, it's another thing, but... I mean, right now, there's no... Like, some phantoms would be the way to go. Like, phantoms on top of some phoenixes. With the maces available, that should be enough to take care of this force. But no phantoms are forthcoming. Instead, glaives are the target unit. And considering 20 metal per second, that might be the only thing really to be done. Phantoms would still take about 25 seconds with this amount of money. Actually, more like 35 seconds. So, I don't blame it. I don't blame them. But I do see this not really working out. Still, the mace is coming in actually managing to do a fair amount of damage. So, with that, at least there is a bit of respite. The south base has been saved, but at a massive cost. Team DoD has lost the entire western base. They've lost most of the map control. I mean, Ashton's gone for troll karm, and... I mean... Okay. I appreciate that. Good job, Surter. I believe that is... I believe that is the entity that brings about the... The destruction of Asgard in Norse mythology? I'm not entirely sure. My Norse myth understanding has kind of been muddled by the Thor movies, so I'm honestly not entirely sure what's what anymore. Although I suppose you could argue that the Thor movies are themselves incarnate or are themselves iterations on Norse mythology. So perhaps saying that they've muddled my understanding of Norse mythology is actually disingenuous, and they have in fact added to it, or rather created a new Norse mythology that is now mixed with other Norse mythology. Whatever. Not the time for literary analysis, now is the time for play analysis and strategic analysis, and the strategic analysis is that Team Astrin just has all the units they need. They have way more money, they have way more units, they have managed to win attrition 3 to 1, their economy is up 3 to 1, it's really just a matter of how long it takes for them to push in. And that is going to be that, at the very least, Team Astrin showing it, and Team DoD, I don't think, I mean, I think they did a pretty decent job, but yeah, it does feel like they kind of had a hard time managing to hold out in any real capacity. Unfortunately, having lost the Southeast meant that there was really just a clock on them. Like, Team Duty couldn't really do much without that economy, and then, of course, that's exactly the direction from which their doom came. Despite the fact that, you no, know, Astrid named their commander Surtur, Ragnarok came from the East, threw a bunch of ducks. And as any Canadian knows, ducks are horrifying and do bring about the end of the world, so this is totally appropriate. So, with that, I, it's just a matter of when the towel is going to be thrown, because this towel... Boy, Team Astron does want this game, and Team DoD really doesn't want to throw it in. Like, they, they want to try everything they have, and I admire that. They only have 20 metal per second, though, so I'm not really seeing much success. Again, that first set of maces did manage to do enough damage to at least hold off the first set of amp bots, but it's... It's not happening. I'm sorry. Wait, is that using flamethrower? It is hellfire. Okay, that is appropriate. Yeah. <laughs> wow, okay. Orpheus in Twitch chat pointing out that my previous thing about attacking the workers first as advice is just, like, the most anti-labor thing. It's like, okay. I mean... Even though I say that, I say that because workers are very strong. So... Take that, well, how you will, but yeah, you get rid of the, if you don't get rid of the workers, you don't win that easily. Because they'll be able to rebuild stuff. Also, from a more political perspective, yeah, that's, like, a thing. But you're trying to fight your opponent and destroy what they have. Breaking the workers breaks their power. But the... <laughs> I mean, okay, but, Orphelius. If I'm saying get rid of the workers first, that means I acknowledge the power of the workers. Also, I should probably point out, on the flip side, protect your own workers, because your own workers are very valuable. It's your opponent's workers I say to destroy. Also, I think you misspelled bourgeoisie, but bourgeoisie has an extra U after the first O. Also, you spell it bourgeois. Like, I... <laughs> anyway. 
So, as I was saying, no, and anyway, back to what I was saying, the, so yeah, works are important, expansions are important, and this game kind of got lopsided. Anyway, back to what's going on. We have, what do we have left for games right now? And no, this is live in case you're wondering. I don't know why you'd think this game was previous from a year ago. This is, I'm doing this live. I am speaking right now. There's a two minute. What you're seeing is from two minutes ago, not a year ago. I don't have that long of a delay. Oh, shoot. I, darn it. Darn it, darn it, darn it. I'm doing so well at not screwing up the 2019 thing. Except today. Which means that it actually has been screwed up for the last several casts that I've done. Ah, thanks for pointing that out. All right, so we're going to be moving on. Looks like there is still another game at least that is... Oops. That is ongoing. So we'll check that possibly, depending on how far along it is. What is being done, actually? Nope, nope, the round's done. Okay, cool. So we have more rounds. I want to see what. Man, I'm really curious. So, so far, I think I've seen all of the teams. Next up, Dice Man's Do This. Dice Man's Do This, I haven't actually seen. Yeah, that's the last one to watch. So, Dyth versus DoD. We're going to get DoD on again. I mean, they literally asked for it. So, yeah. Okay, well, I've just led to a lot of socialist talk in this chat, which is cool. Go for it. Although, that makes me wonder. It's like, now I'm thinking, because, you know, I'm, I've made this distinction between your workers and your opponent's workers. And now I'm starting to think, it's like, okay, so... Are you guys agitating to have all the workers on all the different players just form their own faction? Like, all the constructors for the entire game just unionize and strike. And so the players are playing, and all of a sudden, all the workers just stop. The military units keep going, but the workers, no, they're done. And you can't build anything more. I guess at that point it becomes a tactics game. But, yeah, okay, that's a thing. All right, so we're going to be going with Dyth and DoD because I haven't seen them. We're going to be on Kappa Basin, the most sarcastic map in the game. And I'm going to be putting a bit of a break because that is how I do. So we'll be back in a sec. 